Dr. Ali Raja to our conversation. He's the deputy chair of the Department of Emergency Medicine at Mass General. And hate to be talking to you about this, Dr. Raja, but thanks for joining us. Of course, thanks for having me. Yeah, good to see you, Doctor. We know dozens of neighborhood fireworks and parades similar to the one planned in Highland Park are happening today in Massachusetts. Uh, are local hospitals typically notified about large community events in advance? We are, Jessica. During the recent U.S. Open, for example, the event coordinators worked with all of the local hospitals to plan a uh, to have a plan in case there were a significant number of patients who were transported. Uh, today, for example, with the fireworks on the Esplanade, they're right across the street from MGH. And we've got a lot of disaster plans in place that we drill regularly, and everybody working in the ER today has been reminded of them. We're definitely ready in case we see anything happen. Yeah, so as you just explained, we know that you and your staff, you train for any kind of mass casualty events. If the call does come into the ER that multiple people have been injured, shot, what's the first thing you need to know or that you ask? Uh, Erica, there's a number of things that go through our minds when that happens. First, we need to know the number of patients, um, but we also need to know their approximate ages because at Mass General, we have both pediatric and adult trauma teams. We need to know their vital signs. We need to know what kind of injuries they have. If there's time, we can actually get quite a bit of information from our amazing EMS colleagues and, and we can be really prepared. Sometimes we just don't have time for much of a heads up. Either way, though, we're always ready. And we know now that more than two dozen people were, were taken to aerial hospitals there with serious injuries. Can you explain how that triage process even works? Of course, Jessica. Uh, each state has its own protocols for multiple casualty incidents. I don't know how Illinois works, but here in Massachusetts, we use a four color triage system, uh, red, yellow, green, and, and black. Um, red patients are those who are severely injured and need immediate care and transport. And we focus on them first and then work our way down through the groups as we get more resources and more medical personnel to the scene. Well, unfortunately, everyone knows this now. Mass shootings are happening more often in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And it, it can be kind of easy to fall back on that. Oh, it can't happen here. But of course, it can happen yeah. anywhere. What can people learn so that they can be helpful? Are there certain first aid skills that we should just all know? Absolutely, Erica. Uh, so here's the thing. I'm an instructor for the American College of Surgeons Stop the Bleed program. And we've trained almost 2 million people on how to stop bleeding in injured patients. And it covers things like direct pressure and wound packing and how to use tourniquets. And that course, along with the CPR course, they're skills that everybody should know, no matter where they live. So anybody watching this can go to stopthebleed.org and find a course near you. And now there's even an online course that you can do to get you started. That's great information. Dr. Ali Raja, we always appreciate your time and your insight. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. Jessica.